welcome back to the Stanley Parable. <clears throat> when we were here last, I got teleported to a little light beam place. And I don't know what happened. Should should I go the I'm gonna go this way this time. <gasps> a floating box! Okay. Let's just go into here. Um, I don't know anything. Ah. What happened? It's sad, I know. But what? all stories must come to an end. What, 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 what? Of course, they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination, and I like that idea. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Um. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself, but I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. It wasn't really. I know it can be a little hard getting around without someone looking over your shoulder, but this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides, I haven't really gone anywhere. Oh, he hasn't? Maybe you don't want a guide. But I think I'll always have a place <clears throat> here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. Okay. And for now, I'm happy to be the destination instead of the journey. But only for now. Okay. Well, that was... very abrupt ending. I hope you enjoyed that part of the Stanley Parable. Let's try out the new story, shall we? Um, you know what, I'll just keep going. Just, just, just keep going. I don't know why you need to save a game on here. Let's um, click to skip the story beginning part. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying. Okay, I'm just gonna... Okay, here's my first choice. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. The door on my left. Stanley entered the lounge. He was horrified to find not a single person here. Oh he decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Okay. Let's go find the boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Mm -hmm. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication oh, of dude, any look, human I found life. Some buttons. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. <gasps> and so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. Mm -hmm. One, nine, five, seven. One, but of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known nine, this. Five, seven. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct <laughs> by sheer. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, Stanley funny. ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. I like this narrator, dude. He's kind of funny. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. Yeah, and just as he possible. began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... What shall I find in this long room? <gasps> Rows 
and rows of monitors. monitors. Screens with a number above it. Portrait Stanley noticed, screen. however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, yeah. his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. Yep. But why is set up so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, huh. revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Oh my gosh. An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple I like to machinery. press the buttons. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Wait. Sad. Wait, levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing Wait, work, I, or robot? watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. Buttons. And the reality began oh, to sink in. It lighted, it lighted Stanley, up. like so many beep. other people, beep, 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 reduced beep, beep, to beep, images beep. on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved right, to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. Time to break this thing. I'm, I suppose. Dun, 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 dun. higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. <laughs> no longer enslaved. Well, hmm, engage generator or disable it. Hmm. Hope you had fun watching.